What up and welcome to Rama Screen YouTube channel and here's my review of Netflix series The Diplomat Season 2. Let's rock this. Okay, so this review is mainly for those of you, my fellow The Diplomat fans who already know what's up. Because on this video, I'm mostly going to focus on what the characters are up to now and how the story has developed thus far while avoiding spilling spoilers at the same time. The Diplomat Season 2 has a total of just 6 episodes which is two episodes less than season one. But I'm telling you, I've already watched all these six new episodes and they are downright excellent. Is it better than season one? Yeah, you can make that argument. The stakes are definitely much higher this time and I find season two to be a lot more nail biting. You see, season one to me was a political drama, whereas this new season two moves and feels more like a political conspiracy thriller in which the mystery drives the narrative forward and Kate functions more or less like a detective. But the decisions and the consequences of those decisions and how she navigates those political intricacies, being an American in a foreign soil, are the very thing that makes this show absolutely incredible. And I'm happy to inform you that The Diplomat Season 2 flies high. Created and showrun by Deborah Khan, in The Diplomat Season 2, a deadly explosion in the heart of London shatters U.S. Ambassador Kate Weiler's world. Struggling to rebuild the lives that broke and the team that split apart, Kate's worst fears unfold. The attack that brought her to the U.K. didn't come from a rival nation. It came from inside the British government. As Kate chases the truth, her only real ally is her almost ex-husband Hal Weiler, very much alive and very much involved. She faces a fraught marriage, a complex dynamic with British Foreign Secretary Austin Dennison, and a threatening visit from Vice President Grace Penn. Starring Carrie Russell, Rufus Sewell, David Gyasi, Ali An, Rory Kinnear, Atto Esando, Miguel Sandoval, and Alison Janney. Wow, to see Alison Janney on this show just puts a smile on my face. I was a huge fan of The West Wing all those years ago, and Alison Janney was a big part of why that show was so iconic. And so for her to return to a similar type of drama, though playing a completely separate, different new character... She just looks like somebody who knows her way around the place, you know what I mean? And that's one of the reasons why I love The Diplomat, because the writing quality is very Aaron Sorkin-esque, with the dialogues that run 100 miles an hour. And so to be encountering such an intellectual show, after so many years of not digesting an intellectual show, I'm like, man, it feels good to have that back. It feels refreshing to have these types of thought-provoking stories again. The dynamics between Kate and VP Grace Penn is adversarial, but there's a lot of mutual admiration in there as well. And both Carrie and Allison just knock it out of the park with their scenes. But my favorite remains Kate and her husband Hal. That car explosions definitely give them a newfound perspective about what they mean to each other. And the writers explore that complication in the juiciest way possible in season two. Now, we all know that British Prime Minister Throwbridge is a dick, but he has become an even bigger asshole in season two. And there's sort of a duality to him as well in this new season because, yes, he's an arrogant prick, but is he really an antagonist as well? Audiences might not like him, understandably so. But that is also a testament to Rory Kinnear's superb performance. If I were to have some minor criticism about season 2, I'd say Stewart's distrust and hesitance towards Kate is getting kind of old. It was intense in the previous season, but now that song and dance number has overstayed its welcome. And the writers seem to have run out of ideas on what to do with Adra, who has been resorted to nothing more than a devil's advocate role, and an annoying one, I might add. Another thing that stands out is that for all the commotion that happened in the previous season one, it had a glimmer of hope, stemming from the fact that somebody, let alone a woman, could do the job that others and she herself had very little belief in. Whereas the tone in season two is a bit more doom and gloom, 
It's not a very hopeful, much less an optimistic season, but overall, The Diplomat Season 2 is still a strong follow-up, and I give it a rating of four and a half out of five. Captivating and clever, it's a continued delicate balance between personal ambition and international crisis that Deborah Khan and her team managed to once again maneuver with the kind of wit and humor and gripping tension that keep you on your toes. 